Okay, so let me get started. Um, I mean, I know we have two other panelists, right? So uh, as, as a host of the course, I have to make sure I stay within the time. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and stay below 10 minutes, right? Um, and uh, but what I wanted to 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 do is uh, yeah give a little bit of, of comments on trade facilitation in time of crisis and uh, and RTA provisions right. Um, what uh, I wanted to do primarily is introduce everybody to the UN Global Survey on digital and sustainable trade facilitation 2021 because this is a very new. Uh, data set covering 140 plus countries and a large number of trade facilitation measures, right? Uh, and so this is coming at the time, I mean, during the COVID-19 crisis, right? Uh, and it covers not only the WTO trade facilitation agreement uh, related measures, uh, which we really now provide a baseline for trade facilitation globally, but it also covers more advanced uh, digital trade facilitation measures, paperless trade, cross-border paperless trade measures that have been extremely important uh, to cope with the physical distancing and, and other issues uh, during the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, it also covers sustainable trade facilitation measures targeted at specific groups. I won't go into uh, too much of those. Uh, and I will be, and there is a component of the survey uh, that also focus on trade facilitation during crisis and pandemic. So this is a, a UN global effort with all the regional commissions on board, as well as, as UNCTAD and, and others, right? Uh, so you're very welcome, uh, all participants, to go and, and take a look at the website and see uh, what, uh, what, how your country is doing in all those, those areas. We have very detailed uh, data there. Uh, this is just an overview of the implementation. Um, of trade facilitation, basic, basic trade facilitation measures and digital trade facilitation measures uh, in Asia Pacific countries that are covered by the survey. So you can see a lot of uh, variation across uh, across countries. But generally speaking, uh, talking about Asia Pacific, I mean, uh, South and uh, South uh, Southeast Asia and East Asia. Uh, as uh, developing regions are actually leading the, the rest of the world, right? Uh, so the, the region is, is in good shape in that sense. Obviously, uh, Pacific island countries, South uh, Asia and Central Asia are not doing as well. Uh, but still, uh, the, the main news I think we have uh, and insight from uh, this new trade facilitation data is this, right? Is that despite uh, uh, all the disruptions, supply chain disruption and then the COVID-19 crisis, actually countries kept implementing uh, trade facilitation measures, right? And so we see an implementation uh, implementation of trade passion going up by over five percentage uh, per percentage point, right? Uh, between 2019 and 2021. Um, and so that makes a lot of sense once you understand trade facilitation, because trade facilitation is not about the regulations, right? Uh, or the policy itself, right? That Simon was talking about yesterday uh, with uh, uh, countries putting up export restrictions or, or, or some import measures or something. Like that. It's really about the procedures. It's how do you actually implement the policy and the regulations that you've put in place? So very much tied to SPSTBT as well, because SPSTBT has a lot of um, uh, procedures attached to it. So what you want to do is once you've decided on a measure, let's at least implement it efficiently, right? Uh, and so one big way to do this is to actually go digital. And this is what many countries uh, have, have tried to do uh, in, uh, in light of the COVID-19 crisis and, and, and trying to physical distance uh, all, the, all the stakeholders. So that explains, uh, I think, the progress uh, during the, the past uh, two years and the crisis on trade facilitation. Um, many countries uh, have taken uh, uh, different measures uh, on trade facilitation during the crisis and pandemic. Uh, so here I just um, uh, show a few, right? But I think probably the most um, uh, common measure has been countries deciding to accept electronic version of uh, paper documents, right? Uh, there was a question earlier in the um, uh, I think during the discussion, right, during the live session earlier on, uh, on, on some of the legal issues related to, uh, to trade facilitation. Uh, and the problem is, yes, many uh, laws, right, and uh, customs laws and, and other um, uh, laws in the countries, right, require submission of paper documents, right, still, right? And so, uh, uh, and so that's the bottleneck in, in making things more efficient. So those laws need to be uh, revised so that electronic documents can be accepted uh, as equivalent as uh, as paper documents, right? Uh, but because of the COVID-19 crisis, there was no choice, right? If you wanted to keep trade going, uh, it was very difficult to actually get the paper. 
so many countries, at least on a temporary basis, decided to accept, for example, electronic certificates of origin uh, and also um, uh, electronic sanitary and phytosanitary certificates. Right? But again, all on a temporary basis, sometimes not necessarily with the legal um, uh, legal framework in place uh, to do this very, very well. Right? Um, one thing we found uh, during uh, uh, in the conduct of the of the uh, global survey uh, is that still a lot of work is very much needed on making trade procedures more resilient uh, in times of the pandemic and in time of other crises. Only 14% of the countries uh, were found to have established or clearly assigned an agency to manage trade facilitation measures. Uh, during during the uh, during emergencies and only 16 percent and this is actually really looking forward right in terms of being be better prepared next time right only 16 percent of countries have confirmed long-term preparedness for future crisis so they've developed some kind of of emergency plan uh, and and uh, uh, trade facilitation and trade procedure plan in terms uh, for for uh, uh, to prepare and preparation of future crisis so next time this happens you know everything is ready in the private sector and the traders don't get uh, so confused, right? And supply chain don't get as much affected. So this is some of the uh, uh, data and information we collected through uh, this uh, UN Global Survey effort. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can't go into a lot of the details, right? Uh, but uh, we look at the implementation of different groups of trade facilitation measures, right? Again, uh, transparency measures relates, for example, of you know making your uh, procedures available online, right, for everybody to uh, and for traders to be aware of that. So those type of measures are generally uh, quite well implemented. We see 80% implementation rate uh, on average of, of the measures that are included in the survey. Uh, but then if uh, the, the implementation rate of the different measures keep going down when you start looking at paperless trade measures, so again, digital trade facilitation and in particular cross-border paperless trade measures. So here, again, we are talking about electronic exchange and legal recognition of uh, data and documents, um, uh, not only within the country, all right, between the agencies within a single window system, but no, but between um, between stakeholders uh, and, and between agencies that are located uh, in, in different countries, right? So a lot of challenges still there with a lot of the uh, measures still being implemented on a pilot uh, basis, sometimes on a bilateral basis, right? I mean, ASEAN a little bit more advanced because they have the ASEAN single window agreement, uh, but generally, it's still very problematic, right? So, um, uh, so I think, I mean, that, so one thing that needs to be done is really to boost, right, in, in regional trade agreements, uh, provisions actually can, can help uh, cross-border paperless trade because it's such uh, an important uh, way of reducing uh, trade costs, but also to keep trade going during, uh, during crisis. Specifically on trade facilitation provision in trade agreements, uh, for, for trade in times of crisis and pandemic. I mean, always the question that comes, right? It's very nice to actually add um, uh, provisions uh, on to trade, to regional trade agreements, right? Uh, but actually, do they actually contribute to actually making making trade happen, right? And making trade more resilient. Make, and so uh, actually, I'm happy to report that they, we actually have some evidence uh, that trade facilitation provisions in regional trade agreements are effective uh, in promoting trade facilitation and in promoting trade facilitation in actually in a non-discriminatory way, right? Because I mean, by definition, RTAs are discriminatory against the non-parties, right? Uh, but what we find is over time, you know, when countries start adopting trade facilitation measures that are in the RTAs, they also apply to non-parties, non right? Uh, and so that uh, we have a paper for those who are interested, we have an analytical paper on this, um, uh, actually written with uh, uh, the secretary of the WTO Committee on Trade Facilitation, Nora Nuffold, right, a few years ago. Uh, so you, you can take a look at this if, if that's of interest. Now, my, my general uh, comments and, and uh, on the trade facilitation provision in trade agreements um, in times of crisis would be, uh, you know, let's try to be ambitious, right? Uh, a lot of the trade facilitation provisions uh, in actually at WTO and in, in RTAs uh, tend to be uh, uh, almost measures you can implement unilaterally, like creating a national trade policy. I mean, you don't actually need um, necessarily a provision in RTA to create your national trade portal, right? Trade information portal, right? So I think the focus should be more on cross-border trade facilitation measures, so interoperability of single windows, uh, exchange of electronic data and documents, uh, focus more on digital trade facilitation and, and paperless trade. 
And also maybe in light of the crisis, consider uh, transport and transit facilitation issues a bit more, because right now some of those transport and transit facilitations are, are subject to uh, actually dealt with through separate transport agreements and transit agreements, right? So there is uh, uh, some uh, some rationale for trying to bring those on, on board, right, into RTAs. Uh, second would be be realistic, okay? It's not easy uh, to implement cross-border paper trade. So providing time flexibility and, and, uh, and support uh, to less advanced partners is something that is very important, uh, special and differential treatment and so on. And the last thing, I mean, uh, be inclusive. So think about the needs of SMEs and special group. SMEs were most affected during the COVID-19 crisis. They need special type of trade facilitation measures. Uh, and then be efficient. So that would be my last uh, point. Um, uh, they, it's, when you look at trade facilitation provisions and uh, both at the WTO and in RTAs, um, actually a lot of the time they repeat uh, what's in existing um, instrument, legal instruments and recommendations, right? So I think the most efficient way to, to go would be ideally, right, if possible, when you uh, put provisions in RTAs uh, about trade facilitation, try to refer more directly to existing instruments, right? Like the WCO data model as a specific, uh, or the SCAP framework agreement on paperless trade, or the UNC troll model law on uh, electronic transferable records, right? So if you directly link to that, I mean, that's, that makes it clear for everybody what we are, uh, what, what you're going to do about it. Uh, and I won't go into a lot of details on this. I invite you to uh, to go look at the videos about the framework agreement on facilitation of cross-border paper trade in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, this is a UN treaty that is specifically designed to facilitate trade digitalization. Uh, it entered into force in February 2021. I saw there were some quiz questions about it, so I don't think I need to uh, to, uh, uh, to to go too much into it. Uh, but clearly it can support implementation of both WTO trade facilitation agreement as well as paperless trading provision in RTAs. We tend to be in e-commerce chapters, so actually there is a link with the digital trade um, uh, sec uh, discussion that will take place tomorrow. So let me leave it at this. Thank you very much.